people are going to get terrified. So then the next time we come up, they're all going to sell on that retracement. And then guess what? If the bullish case happens and this bull run continues, it's going to take off. So this little shakeout, this scare is designed to get everybody the panic sell and go, oh man, next time we go up, I'm taking profits. And you know what the average Joe is going to do? They're going to take profits a little too soon. And then we go higher. What is going on guys? Kevin Cage here with another XRP update. Got a bunch of exciting news for you guys today and I hope you had a phenomenal weekend. So in this video, we're gonna be going over the XRP price chart, show a few looks as to why I don't believe the bull run is over and show you some worst case scenarios as well and it is not financial advice. I also would like to show you an adorable post by former SEC chairman, Jay Clayton. I find it to be very, very ironic, just like Brad Garlinghouse does. And I also wanted to review a few other exciting points of news. So I know many of us use exchanges like uphold.com along with coinbase and links are in the video description we can see that i finally ordered my coinbase card so i was on a wait list for quite some time i i'm not sure if i'm still on the wait list for uphold um i really slacked on that one and i should have moved a lot faster but nonetheless we can see we get some pretty cool rewards so this is just a debit card a visa card that allows you to spend your crypto holdings so if you have crypto on coinbase you can move some of your crypto or usdc the stable coin us dollar coin into this account and you can spend your crypto in real time. So removing the barrier to entry, essentially making on and off ramps a bit easier. And of course, stable coins help to do just that to mitigate the volatility. So all good and great. I support anything like this and making crypto a lot more mainstream. And what I wanted to point out initially, and I hope they do add more rewards in the future, specifically if XRP ever gets relisted, and I'm sure when XRP gets relisted, it'll already be past $2, maybe even all time high in the future. You can choose your reward and only activate one at a time. So you had these options, either 1% back in Bitcoin. Eh, no thanks. I'd much rather get 4% back in XLM. The brother sister relationship between them and XRP, I'm wishing them both well. So I wanted to share that and I'm excited to see what other rewards are there. If you did get an email saying, you know, the wait is over by Coinbase and you can apply now and finally order your card, go ahead, take advantage of this because uh, I think it will be fun to use. Okay, and I had to highlight this before going over Jay Clayton's adorable articles right here, Brad Garlinghouse. My main takeaway from this, Jay Clayton, the former SEC chairman, is joining the chorus of voices saying there is and has been a lack of regulatory clarity for crypto. That stifles innovation here in the US. Definitely ironic, but better late than never. And I love how this narrative is starting to change, not surprised one bit. Cryptos, like nearly any new innovative technology, and just think back to the dot-com bubble, can be used for good and bad purposes, just like fiat. There's more money laundering guys in fiat, in the US dollar, in physical cash, than there is in things like Bitcoin. Um, of course, you know, privacy tokens could be a bit different though. The problem is that U.S. companies seeking to be compliant and use this technology for good are left in limbo or for Ripple worse because of a lack of a clear, predictable framework, what you can and cannot do. If you do not have specific guidelines, there can be no adoption, there can be no innovation because banks, all these FIs are conservative by nature. They have to be. My favorite quote from the article, we must also keep in mind the default rule in the American system. Innovation is welcome, absent some legal reason to oppose it. Words to live by. So funny. Man, Jay Clayton, I wish you could actually practice what you preach. So and also, as a quick side note, we actually had a fellow XRP community member DM me. I'll keep it anonymous unless he wants to come out and share his experience. But he said that he met Jay Clayton or ran into him at a bar in New York City. Um, and this gentleman, I've known him on crypto Twitter, at least maybe since like 2018, if I remember correctly, maybe 2019. And uh, nonetheless, he said that he did ask him about Bitcoin and uh, his responses were a bit smug or arrogant, but not surprised one bit. So anyways, this is all available on WSJ editorial page. And of course, we can see that Jay Clayton was actually one of the authors right here. And I find it to be a very, very ironic title. So by Jay Clayton, crypto needs regulation, but it doesn't need new rules. I cannot believe he's qualified qualified to even say that at this point. And right here, just wanted to share a recent quote from the current chairman of the SEC, Gary Gensler. Now, whether you love him or hate him, he's taught MIT courses on blockchain technology, specifically reviewing Ripple, the company, XRP, the XRP ledger, Ethereum, the blockchain, um, you name it, permissionless, permission DLT systems, going between talking about ICOs, the man knows his stuff. So I'm happy that we have somebody in this position that is at least fully qualified to handle this matter. And his quote right here is this, 
The SEC chairman lamented that because cryptocurrency exchanges lack a market regulator, there is no protection around fraud or manipulation. Now, although that may be true, the SEC proclaims that they're protecting the everyday retail investor, you and I, and I wholeheartedly disagree with how all of this was brought to attention in late December as, of course, Jay Clayton left. So we will see if they really wanted to protect us. I think they would handle this way ahead of time. They had, you know, XRP is nine years old now. So we already know from the Department of Justice and FinCEN that it was classified as a virtual currency in 2015. All of this was going on. There were, you know, sales just like with ETH. Don't even get me started on the Ethereum Foundation. And I like Ethereum. But yet again, we just have to wait. I am a slave to the market and I will make money in between by either being patient or taking advantage of any future dips. And also, I know I tweeted this the other day, but uncertainty, FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. They exist in every single investment vehicle. They existed in Apple, Amazon stock, real estate investment trusts, you name it. That's why there's opportunity. There's always going to be somebody that's afraid. If everybody's confident, you might want to get out of that investment because that's exactly when things turn to the downside. So just wanted to share that and choose why. I'm comfortable with the FUD points that I see in the crypto market for year over year growth in the future. And I know another gentleman, uh, um, Big Dad on Twitter, also even said risk is the price you pay for opportunity. Completely agree with that sentiment. Next up, so XR patients right here, give them a follow, XRP Artisan. This is essentially my sentiment for the market as well. Now, keep in mind, I've taken profits and other alts. I kind of treat XRP as more of a savings account. That is my personal choice. That is not financial advice. You guys have to do what is best for you. Some people have family. Some people have different types of debts. So please consider that going forward. You do not have to copy me by any means. If Bitcoin's bull run is over, alts will take off for their last hurrah before the crypto bear market. Fine by me. If Bitcoin's bull run is is not over, alts will rise with Bitcoin and will likely have multiple alt seasons along the way. Also fine by me. Either way, I win. And this is exactly how I see it. I know if you guys watch Blockchain Backer, keep an eye on his channel and watch what he's looking at, referring to the BTC dominance. Now, we have the Bitcoin dominance on coin market cap. This is on the weekly, and of course, this is just a subjective trend line, but we can see we're at 41%. I want this dominance to fall. And I did see him line up some additional fractals. Um, I don't know if it was this one or not, but I think it was like maybe a daily or four hour time frame. Nonetheless, I'd be looking for something like that as well. I want this to crash for BTC dominance. It doesn't mean Bitcoin has to crash. It just means the dominance has to go down and then it sends our alts up that are well behind the pattern. And I'll go over that at the end of this video. Also, we have Caitlin Long sharing this. More regulatory drums beating today. Stablecoins need the same regulation as banks. Shared by BOE Bank of England, a paid Ripple client. Right here. The Bank of England says that stablecoin payments should be regulated in the same way as payments handled by banks. Stablecoins, a form of crypto, are designed to have stable value relative to fiat currencies. Tether's USDT pegs a token to the value of the US dollar, and Stasis EURS pegs a token to the euro's value. These products often serve as an on and off ramp, as I said in the beginning of this video, into the crypto industry for those seeking safety during wild swings in more volatile cryptos like Bitcoin and Ether. And lastly, stablecoins used as money should meet equivalent standards as those provided by commercial bank money, otherwise known as bank deposits and this is by Andrew Bailey he's the governor of the Bank of England this could conceivably include know your customer requirements for individuals and a multitude of compliance mechanisms designed to money laundering and financial crime more broadly an increase in the use of digital currencies would also impact banks liquidity ratios and we'll be going over the XRP price chart at the end of this video but I had to show this poll right here and it's literally a 50-50 split, which happens next for Bitcoin price. $70,000 per unit or $20,000 per BTC. We're at 50.3% versus 49.7%. I know some people took actual um, screenshots. Look at that, 50-50 dead even. So thank you for sharing that. Absolutely crazy. 900 votes later, 50-50 split. This is what has me worried. Now, of course, I'm bullish on the market long term. I just believe that the more people are bullish, the more likely there is for another double bottom or another essentially sweep of those lower price levels. I'm talking, you know, the 30K region, 35K region. It is a scary region and it's designed to shake people out. I'll let you guys know. Full disclosure, I will not be selling. That's my personal choice. I've already de-risked enough in this market. And what's going to happen, and we're going to go over the chart, is when right now, say BTC does like another little sweep people are going to get terrified. So then the next time we come up, they're all going to sell on that retracement. And then guess what? If the bullish case happens and this bull run continues, 
it's going to take off. So this little shake out, this scare is designed to get everybody the panic sell and go, oh man, next time we go up, I'm taking profits. And you know what the average Joe is going to do? They're going to take profits a little too soon, and then we go higher. So that's just my personal belief, guys, not financial advice, and we will simply have to wait and see. Nobody knows for sure, okay? And I have to cover this whether you love it or hate it. I'm not the happiest about this by any means, shared by Martin Volk. Right here, the European Commission. Europeans are looking forward to traveling again, and the European Union EU Digital SeaWorld Certificate will make it happen safely. The certificate offers different options to the citizens covering vaccination, test results and recovery we can see right here you can tell if a person's been vaccinated has received a negative test result or has recovered very interesting valid in all eu countries unfortunately i think this is just the beginning and the most important part i want to cover before going over the price charts is this the president of el salvador right here naib sharing this now remember the bitcoin conference occurred in miami and you know a lot of smart people are involved i know there was some hype and there's a lot of kind of nonsense occurring just like at any conference so take it with a grain of salt i want to share this really quick i'm just going to read this part and then we're going to go over some other facts that may not make Bitcoin holders the happiest, but I'm just presenting the information here. So take it with a grain of salt. We all have our biases or biases. So Bitcoin is a market capitalization of $680 billion. If 1% of this, of Bitcoin, is invested in El Salvador, that would increase our GDP by 25%. I cannot believe the president's actually saying this, by the way. On the other side, Bitcoin will have 10 million potential users and the fastest growing way to transfer $6 billion a year in remittances. Okay, so 10 million potential users. That's great. But remember, Bitcoin might not be the most scalable. Could it be the store of value and become the biggest crypto forever? Potentially. And that really wouldn't matter to me, to be honest. Like, I, I, I'm not wishing it to uh, fail by any means. And I remember Andrew Zell was even pointing out, you know, one day, XRP will be accepted as legal tender in some country. And remember, Bitcoin's not even accepted. It's still kind of just being proposed right now. This is not done. This is not factual yet. And Bitcoin paved the way, but the instant scalable and feeless cryptos will be the ones used at scale to pay for goods throughout the world of e-commerce, online payments, you name it. And of course, there's plenty of other cryptos that are positioned to do just that. So could they be interoperable with Bitcoin? Could Bitcoin be wrapped over the network? Absolutely. So I'm not going to rule that out. But now... Some need-to-know information shared by, we have Matt Hamilton. He's the Director of Developer Relations over at RippleX. Now, check this out. The average Bitcoin transaction fee over the past month has been around $12. Okay, well, remember, El Salvador supposedly will bring 10 million new users for Bitcoin. Now, I'd love nothing more than that. Any more volume into crypto market, awesome, more adoption, etc. And yes, there is a use case for Bitcoin. I understand that. But the median wage of a waiter in El Salvador is $2,300 per year, around $6.46 a day. $6.46 a day versus a $12 fee for a single transaction. And I mean, I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm sending multiple Venmo transactions a day. If you're going out for with friends or you're traveling, etc. And a single Bitcoin transaction fee alone would cost two days wages for a waiter in El Salvador. So we'd also have to look at the wealth distribution. Okay, 10 million users in, or citizens in El Salvador. Well, what percentage of them even have the money to send Bitcoin transactions consistently? That is a huge, huge concern and a huge point that should be brought up more often, okay? Now, Arturo Portilla, he's also a fintech lawyer. I really, really value his opinion as well. And check this out. Most El Salvadorans don't have enough purchasing power to buy basic needs like food, clothing, water, and shelter. And I have many friends from El Salvador. Do you really think they'll be able or willing to pay Bitcoin fees? Whatever it is that Naive the president is trying to achieve behind the scenes, this is complete nonsense. So just sharing another point of view. All right, now let's dive into the XRP price chart. So before getting into this, we're all well aware in the XRP community, there are many analysts out there that conservatively speaking are predicting XRP to hit $5 to $15 per this bullish cycle. Now I know that's a super wide range, but I wanted to provide that because we can see even the 1618 on the monthly would show only $5 in my mind as a worst case scenario. Now this is not financial advice i have to be careful sharing this because yes i am biased so please go watch some bearish info follow a variety of other people and come to your own decisions guys i've just been in this asset class for a little while i know some people have been here well before me and so i'm always trying to learn and keep an open mind so right here the xrp price chart on the monthly versus the ethereum price chart on the monthly notice 
that around this structure I highlighted that there's a few looks you could give this and I understand this is subjective but I believe that we still hit these extensions. Remember, just a Fibonacci retracement tool from swing high, swing low, wick to wick, same thing for ETH and even showing the previous cycles um, in the past and I do believe that this market right now per the alt season that we're expecting per a, a variety of analysts that I'm even watching too as well and trying to bounce ideas and then I'm digging deep in what they're doing and then trying to go off of my own um, looks and it really does help me kind of form my own opinion the way we're going to see this cycle occur. So in 2013 there were pullbacks, there were 50% pullbacks that scared people and of course in the alt, in the alt market we even witnessed, we witnessed some assets going down 80%. So. Is this a massive shakeout or are we just getting started? Notice this, so swing high, swing low, came above and now we finally closed a monthly candle finally above the 236. So I'm happy about that. And keep in mind April we we're at just under 60 cents or March and now we finally closed a monthly above that level. And of course, with these EMAs, exponential moving averages, the 8, 21, and 34, these are Fibonacci numbers. So these are not arbitrary numbers, of course. You're aware that with the Fibonacci, you know, the 618, the golden ratio, these numbers are actually very, very interesting. So typically, I just use trend-based Fibs, I use Fibonacci retracement, and I'll also use these three EMAs on the macro timeframes that can be unbelievably helpful. And typically, when you're seeing alts, or not alts, just any asset, for that matter, above the 8 EMA, even on the monthly, it's still in a strong position. Even if you think that RSI is down, it's still relatively in a great position. So, worst case in my mind is this. There's a period of consolidation, of ranging, of boredom, just like many other analysts are saying. I'm not taking credit for that by any means. I'm seeing the same exact thing. We're forming this cup. Hopefully, this is a beautiful cup and handle just like we had for Ethereum that seems to be just ahead of XRP. XRP is one of the last movers every single time. And I know that's boring, but ideally, that can be... The nicest thing because then you're a lot more confident when you see that assets are reaching even the 3618 you can go and compare and go okay well is that the high end is that the conservative end either way i like the upside that i'm faced with sitting at the 236 retracement when other assets on the worst case scenario are even hitting the 702 which is just between the 786 and the 618 so i like hedging my bet with xrp i feel safe with it i'm not doing leverage trading so please 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 um, you know, do what's best for you. There's a lot of great leverage traders that know how to handle the 1% risk and manage risk to reward, but I will not be doing it with this bullish cycle. I'm just doing very large swing trades with this market. And keep in mind, guys, with this video, I'm not bashing on anybody. I'm not bashing on any asset class. This is just one man's opinion. I don't have an agenda to say that my way is the best way or somebody else has a better way. I'm really going and marching to the beat of my own drum. And the truth is, you're going to have to find other styles that cater to your needs. You're going to learn from other people. You're going to take what you like and discard what you don't. There is not a single way. If anybody says that their way is the only way and that's the right way, that is complete garbage. You're going to have to cater to your own needs, okay? So, just want to encourage that now. We can see we're still sitting above the 8 EMA on the monthly. I like seeing this. I want to continue seeing that we close above this because this is typically used as support. Now, we'll also do a top-down analysis and go down to the weekly, look at those EMAs as well. But I just want to show you how this is actually acting. We can see for Ethereum, maintaining and closing still above the candle body. Even if it closed on top of it, it's still maintained above it each and every time as we climbed up and even reached and created that new all-time high. Now, do I believe that we still have, just like even BC backers talking about, the potential, it's not guaranteed, but the potential of a blow off the top for this market after this ranging period? Absolutely. And hopefully the BTC maxis don't get upset, but I just see that there's still more upside in Ethereum as a long-term investment over Bitcoin. And of course, I'd rather hold XRP over all three, specifically at this point in time, but just wanted to share that. And now I know we can read it and say, okay, we're around the 236, we're around the 236, looks like it's this structure. Um, is this on a monthly? Is it going to take that long to go up? Well, I have no idea. I don't know the timings. I usually just take aim, set targets, and I wait. And of course, it's always been worth it for me, but I know that it's not easy for everybody. And sometimes it's not easy for me either, but the best thing to do, guys, is get outside, get away from the charts, have a plan understand the risk and do what is best for you. Even for ETH though, we can see that it kind of went up, went up, went up, and then it closed over the 50% retracement. We want XRP to do that. It didn't quite get there. It wicked perfectly right there last month, but it didn't close above that. So the 50% retracement, at least on Bitstamp, we want to see XRP close a monthly over about $1 and say maybe 73, 75 cents. So I want to see a monthly candle close on top of that and you know some people are going to say oh kevin you're wrong it did this or this i'm like guys 
I'm not on the 30 minute chart. I'm looking on the monthly. This might be boring, but I will continue to be here in the years ahead. And it's really nice to see that ETH is even just consolidating around the two, just below the 2618. And XRP around that level would be, I'd say, five to seven dollars. So ETH created that new all time high, closed the monthly essentially on that all time high. And then it kept going, staying above the AEMA. And look at that wick to perfection wicking right to the AEMA. Now notice for ETH on the weekly now doing a top-down analysis, we can see it's forming this little cup, or you could say like even blockchain backer showing that V-shape recovery. I would love nothing more, could absolutely see this playing out. I'm just afraid of another type of double bottom move. So you see like right here, we have a wick. Well, look at ETH, we kind of had two wicks coming down. That can happen, it's not gonna scare me out. I know if we wicked back down to even 70 cents or you know, back tested these levels, people are gonna be freaking out on Twitter. If you wanna panic sell, go ahead. Um, I will not be, that is not my style. I do not like selling low. So I'm gonna be watching this recovery and how this actually occurs. Of course, it can be different and I'm actually gonna look at some other assets as well besides Ethereum, but I do like Ethereum, essentially the king of the alts. And even Monero XMR sitting above the eight EMA on the monthly. And we can see we're just sitting and hovering above that 50% retracement, still holding that strength. And keep in mind, we did essentially create an all-time high with this price. So I'd think that Ethereum's in front, then XMR, and we can see some other assets maybe in front of XRP, and then XRP is last but not least. So as long as these assets relatively hold their strength up here, we can keep an eye on the RSI, whatever you want, and just watch these retracements on the monthly and weekly closes. I am still confident in XRP. And of course, I wouldn't be surprised if all of a sudden when the candles move in a green way and we keep going up, there's going to be good news that is announced, whether it's relistings on exchanges or some positive news with the SEC lawsuit and Ripple, anything in between new partnerships, you get it. When the price moves, there's going to be narratives, there's going to be articles that come out and justify that. But all in all, guys, we see XRP is kind of just holding this trend. This is just a sloppy ascending channel. We can see we're just still holding, kind of ranging between this. Whether you wanted to throw some Elliott wave counts, all good and great. I still believe that we still have upside. And any wicks, even another little double bottom right here, or another sweep through those prices would not affect me, because I do like the look of the XRP BTC chart as well. Ethereum, same thing, just holding this trend. Um, any types of knockbacks wouldn't necessarily scare me. And I know this video might be long, guys, but I really want to show you this as well for the XRP price chart and Zillica. So first things first, on the weekly with Zillica, let's say we had a Fibonacci retracement from swing high, swing low, and we'll drag it all the way over. And let's say that prices have never been up here before. And typically, we say, well, yeah, I'm in a bullish market per the tokenomics. We're bullish on the asset. We like what we see. We'd say, okay, the impulse level, we'd probably get to the 4.236. And little do we know, we actually did. We closed our candles essentially right on that at this level. It wicked to it, hit it, retested for support, etc. Well, what if price has never been back here and we wanted to gauge that next impulse level. Well, Blockchain Backer showed this and it was the first time I've ever seen anyone do it and I really like it. All he does is use the 236 retracement as the swing high. So use the 0.236 as the top here. So watch, we're gonna drag it to the top of this swing high, swing low, 236 to the top, came up, ranged, 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 blasted through the 786, closed on top of it and then what? went right to the 4.236. So I really like how these Fibonacci's react. You could literally argue and draw a nice little parallel channel, I mean, in this region and just say, yes, we have a lot of confluences here besides even the Fibonacci that could show us of us hitting this previous level. So this is what I like to use. And we're even retesting this 3618. So I like using the 236 as the top for longer term price predictions and an asset where you want to gauge where we could essentially hit before doing another period of consolidation before reaching the next level up. Now to finish it up with a bang and show you some bullish looks on the XRP price chart. So really quick, just to look at my Fibonacci extension tool, I have a few different points than most people. Of course, it may seem a little messy, but there's a method to my madness. There's a lot of TA I do behind the scenes. Of course, we have the 4.236 at the top, but where did I get these negative levels the Fibonacci level let me draw it upside down so you can actually see and get a better look of these well notice I have the negative 0.27 and then the negative 0.618 which is the golden ratio well just like the 236 at the top I got from blockchain backer another gentleman I got this from early last year like the beginning of 2020 last year when I took his course was Tori now very very cool guy I encourage you guys to follow bulls and bears in this ecosystem he's part of innovation markets you can follow him right here and he actually showed this look so I've had this on my Fibonacci ever since and I just wanted to kind of give credit where credit was due and typically you can see a lot of confluences take place on the four hour time frame. So now I'm on the weekly. I don't think he's done this. Um, hopefully he hasn't because I'm not trying to take credit for it. But let me show you a few looks. And this is very common in a variety of assets. You can do the same thing with Bitcoin. Or even funny enough, I do it with micro cap altcoins, even on uh, charts.cointrader.pro. And you'd be surprised. So 
let's actually see what all the buzz is about. Let's go swing low and then we're going to go swing high and we'll drag it over. OK, so we can see this is a OK and we go to B. And now what we're betting is we're looking for a retracement. So we found this retracement. And what that means is essentially we're looking for that overall retracement to begin probably around the 618, 702, which is dead middle between these 786. And I'm going to show you an example of sometimes it goes even below that because this is what all of us are looking for. So we went A, B, C, and we wicked around to the 618. And what happened? Well, point D actually was the impulse level. So this is a perfect A, B, D, A, B C, D level. And we come right to whether it's the negative 0.27 or the 618. So that was 91 cents or $1.11. And it shows that we're even residing around this. So just like with Zill, guys, that I showed you, it's kind of an area where you can bet that we're going to range or eventually kind of meet up. And that's just kind of gauging impulse levels. Now, there's way cleaner looks I can give you. Let's do another one. And let's just say if this was an ABCD, let's check this out. So now we're going to swing low from this level, swing high up to here, and let's drag it over and just look. Now, it's important to know the trend. I'm not just arbitrarily throwing fibs and saying this is going to happen. You have to understand the asset, the tokenomics, the overall ecosystem and what's occurring and then gauge it with some other trends and confluences you're aware of. OK, but let me just show you an example. And I know I drew this sloppily. So right here we have A is right there. We went to B and now we're waiting for a retracement. Well, the retracement's occurring right now. We came to the 618, wicked below it. OK, we thought we we're going to go all the way up to, you know, D, perhaps because it's A, B, C. And we thought it was game time. Oh, no, nope, fake out, came back down. And now it's actually part of a longer trend. It, in fact, wicked below the 786. But why I'm still bullish, actually, in the hopes that we do reach these levels of two dollars, 40 cents, even three dollars per XRP this year, especially because this is a weekly candle. It looks pretty good right now. And we're holding the trend. If you guys watch the beginning or the entire video, we can see that we're closing above the 786 still, the candle. We wicked, just like we discussed, sometimes that happens to take advantage of all the liquidity before making our way up. Now we're going to watch how we recover, but essentially the next point, because it goes A, B, C around this range, 618 to the 786, went even below that, but we're still holding. We did not break through. So I'm still confident. And of course, our next level would be up here of two dollars 40 cents all the way up to three dollars so time will tell this would not surprise me one bit we can draw trends you can do whatever you want i just wanted to show that and yes i know the stochastic rsi is not in the best spot if you ask me but we know how quickly we can wrap up as we can see per the historical data and the rsi is still in a strong position do not be surprised so do we in fact kind of get that double bottom we just kind of range and scare people out we will see i hope you guys enjoyed this video be sure to like subscribe and i will catch you in the next one